Neuralink tries to create the world's first brain-computer interface. That means connecting your brain to a machine that can read certain actions in your brain or that can send actions to your brain. To do so, Neuralink created an implant. Elon Musk summarized the implant of his company as a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. And it is exactly that. The implant is a computer the size of a penny in the bone of your skull. The computer has tiny wires that have been stitched in very specific parts of your brain. The wires measure electric currents that go through those places when the part of your brain becomes active in order to detect the actions. In their last demo, Neuralink showed an implant in the skull of a pig called Gertrude. They were able to detect the brain activity when Gertrude smelled her food. And this showed that the pig was healthy while wearing the implant and that it could read a certain action directly from her brain. Signals in the brain are based on electricity. This is very lucky for scientists as we have built all our technology on electricity as well. If signals would be based on purely chemical interactions, we'd have a much harder time to detect anything. Let's briefly dive into how the brains work. Our brain consists of special cells called neurons. These neurons are connected to each other by axons. The axons end in synapses. Neurons are activated by other neurons, giving a signal, and when it decides to continue the signal, it sends a message through the axons to its synapse. Brain activity is most commonly measured using this exact phenomenon as it leaves electrical traces that our machines can pick up. There are two main ways of detecting the electric brain signals, invasive and non-invasive. Non-invasive means we detect signals from outside of our skull by using a cap or a larger machine. Invasive means we detect it by accessing the brain inside of our skull by using an implant. Examples of non-invasive techniques are EEG sensors. You may have seen the straight looking bathing caps with a lot of wires sticking out of it. And bluntly said, they measure brain activity by the electric waves your brain sends out when working. The problem with EEG, however, is that the signals are very, very easily distorted. Muscle contractions also send out these signals, so just blinking, raising your eyebrows or clenching your jaws will be picked up by the sensors. So how did Neuralink solve this problem? Well, they started looking into an invasive technique, intracortical neural recording, which means they stitch an implant in the bone of your skull with tiny wires that poke directly into the brain's cortex. And by doing so, it can single out very specific parts of your brain and with a very high resolution and little noise from muscle movement. The insertion of such an implant is a highly complex and precise job. So difficult, a human surgeon won't be able to do it. Neuralink solved this problem by creating their own surgical robot who can insert the wires and the implant within only one hour. After installing the implant, a new problem arises. How do we find out what the brain waves actually mean? The human brain has 86 billion neurons all sending out electric signals. The challenge is to find out which signals correspond to a certain action. In the example with the pigs, they need to look for the signals that indicate the pig is smelling food. To do so, Neuralink uses AI models that find out patterns in the recorded brain data. Training these models is done by giving the pig something to smell and then labeling that moment in time in the data. When the AI model has seen enough examples of this event, it can find out what data corresponds with that action. Next to smelling, this can also be done for moving your limbs, moving your eyes or thinking certain actions. And by continuing this way, Neuralink will be able to detect all kinds of different actions. So besides detecting whether Gertrude smelled her food, let's take a look at more impactful applications. The first application for Neuralink is accessibility with machines. <music> 
Using the brain activity, we can start learning how to control our phones, laptops or other devices using our brains only. So that's controlling your device hands-free by only thinking about it. The second application is to help out people with spinal cord injuries. People can injure their spinal cord, which is the nerve highway in your spine. This results in the loss of sensation or muscle functions in certain parts of your body. This is because the electrical currents cannot pass the damaged part. Using Neuralink, the brain activity for controlling those desired body parts can be detected and sent to the body part through an external connection. Or it can be sent to a prosthetic body part. This would mean disabled people might walk again or they'll be able to move their arms again. The third and final application is brain activation. The inverse of reading the brain is activating the brain from external input. This is even more complicated and experimental, but research has shown that blind people see flashes of light when being probed by a small electrical current in their visual cortex. Experimentation has also been conducted on the auditive part of the brain. Subjects heard classical music concerts when being probed at the auditory part of their brain. Applications such as these are key to creating bidirectional brain computer interfaces. There is still a lot of work to be done in the field of brain computer interfaces. Neuralink is rapidly pushing the status quo and once they start doing clinical trials, things will start to get real very fast. I'm excited to see where this is going and I hope you are too. Thank you for watching the tech update on Neuralink by Bit. If you're interested in seeing what more cases we do, check out wearebit.com. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.